There's a fearlessness. There's a confidence. There's this anonymity. No one recognizes you. Even if they do want to fuck with you, as they do when you're gay, you get messed with quite a bit. Even if they do want to, at least in my experience, they don't question your authority. That's why it's called a drag queen. Anytime someone puts on a base, whether it's in their everyday life, or whether it's eyelashes, mascara, or even goth paint, it is a way to escape your everyday mundane and to express a side of you you normally repress. So for me, uh, I fell into drag inadvertently because my dance coach wanted to give me a, an outlet to let my feminine creativity out from teaching women all day long to dance more like a man which ironically worked in a weird psychological way. When Tara steps out on stage, I never know what to expect because she just takes over. So I'm kind of along for the ride. It's very like bipolar, schizophrenic, nut job thing. It, it sounds weird, but it's true. You really don't have an idea what's going to come out of my mouth. Um, and often I'm surprised. My 15-year-old self was a fundamentalist Pentecostal Christian who was not allowed to dance, had long Jesus-like hair, whose family kept him in the church or at home doing homework. I would pray every day. I spoke in tongues. I touched people that were slaying the spirit, and I wanted to be a pastor at 15. I've changed. So there was this charity event I did a couple weeks ago where I just was trying out some new makeup techniques. I love painting. I love like actually painting and we call beating your face or painting your face uh, is what we call putting on makeup. So I tried these new techniques and I remember doing what I had to do and I'm getting really close to the mirror and I'm changing the shape of my eyes and my face, whatever, and I'm just, I'm at work. And then I, I put my brush down, I'd step back and I look in the mirror and I went, whoa. And it was just a little too real. I looked a little too passable. Even though my, f my muscles were like fucking Xena, my face just looked so much like my mother. It was kind of like, that, that was a little real, that was a little creepy. Um, but that happens a couple times, and then I, you just had to laugh and going, well, there you are, That's it, but it's a real part of me. It's a real part of myself and my skills and my talents and my personality, so I, I, have, I have to accept it. It just often freaks you out when you see how much of you reminds you of your mother. If I do this number where I go out and I sing this number from Smash. I just keep my back to the audience and I stumble back out on stage and I do a number as Marilyn high off her ass, drunk off her ass, as she was. Then the next number I do, when that's done, it goes right to one of Nicki Minaj's numbers called Marilyn Monroe, talking about um, this is how Marilyn Monroe felt, this loss, this tragedy, take me or leave me, I'll never be perfect, but believe me, I'm worth it, my favorite line. And I take off my drag on stage, and I deliver the piece into a mirror where I am reflecting on myself. When you see a drag queen so vulnerable and hair taped back and things pinned into your body and you see the waist that's pulled in beyond anything healthy or natural, it is something that you, it, it, it makes you, it just it does something to the audience. And through that number, people start to actually see part of themselves. If you come to see one of my shows and you do not leave affected in some way, I have not done my job. Whether you like it or not, whether it upsets you or makes you happy, I want you to at least remember what it felt like when you first 
met Tara Hyman. Okay, lighting. Hi, everybody. Say hi, Danny. Hi. And uh, and Andy, Jordan, and Brandon. Brandon. Hold on, let's actually get, let's see them. There we go. Uh-huh, 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 uh-huh. <laughs> it's like bait bus, just I win. I'm the only contestant. Where's off? Yeah.